Any questions on that? Um, any questions so far? Yeah, we have a question about the SRC. Oh, the SRC? What is the SRC? Is that your question? Yeah, I mentioned the SRC. And what is the SRC? The SRC is very similar to the RDC. However, at the RDC, there's those 23 vendors that are constantly coming in there, the same 23 vendors. The SRC is a little, it's like that where we have specific vendors that are shipping product and all of their product into the SRC. They're different vendors. They're vendors that are that may have specials for us that we're making, making special buys on. We want to bring that in. We want to store it. Um, you know, for whatever reason it may be, there's going to be a shortage of the product. We have all buying opportunities. Uh, and you know, different types of vendors ship their product in there um, in large quantities where we just hold it. So again, it's 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 really for a financial as well as you know a service level type process. But at the same time, it's <coughs> Very much like the NRDC, uh, just with miscellaneous vendors. Um, out of the 1.2 million lines uh, that you said uh, was a volume per day, how many waves do you run per day, and what's the slice allocated to each? Yeah. So the question is, is how many uh, of the 1.2 million lines, and again, that's across the you know 28 forward distribution center. How do how many waves, and how do we slice that? It really varies distribution center by distribution center. A lot of it ties in with our transportation. Um, for example, and I'm gonna, I can speak very clearly to the, to the Salt Lake City distribution center, which again is one of our smaller distribution centers overall, but um, we run six waves. Today we have six different waves. We have an emergency wave right to begin with where we release a lot of our you know, certain controlled substance products and everything like that that take longer to pick and that they aren't quite as automated in the picking process some more manual intervention there. So we release that early on. But then what we do is we, we release all of our Montana routes, everything that's going into Montana, because we want that to be out on our earliest truck. So we get everything out in wave two that's going to Montana. Then basically after that, we just go in and we sort it primarily by routes. We do a lot of cross docking, as you can imagine. In order to, to service those type of areas, we have a significant number of cross docks. Out of the Atlanta Distribution Center, I think we were, they were talking to us the other day that they have seven or eight different cross stocks that they have to run to throughout South Carolina, down into Southern Georgia, all these different places. So based on where, you know, distance and how many customers are in each of those is how we really break our ways. So does that, does that answer your question? So I mean, some distribution centers, I know when I was working in the Landover uh, Maryland Distribution Center a few years ago, they, went, they had up to 11 and 12 different waves that they had. So, you know, some different thoughts. And again, with the new system, that'll be interesting to see because the new waving process from WM is significantly different than what we have today. It, alike in the fact that you put certain customers in there and release them, but how you manage that process is going to be different with WM for us. So. You mentioned one of the main kits you have lines per hour. Mm -hmm. So what exactly you um, you mean by line? A, a line is, is a line. Great question. I, I probably should have mentioned what is a line. A line to us is any on an order, to, a, a pick order. If you're a customer and you order, let's say three items, three separate SKUs. When we release that, there are th that would be three lines. Regardless of how many pieces, there would be three lines. Three SKUs were released. So that would be three lines. So we, and the way we measure LPA, what a line is, is picks, receipts, and returns. So if we bring in, so that was a pick example on the, re on the receiving side. If I receive, an, if the package comes in and it has five separate items in it, that's five lines. An order may come in with three pallets, but it's all the same item, three separate pallets, one item, that's still only one line. Okay, so, so that's, the, that's the receiving side, and then we have returns. The, the returns process, as it comes back in, again, we have a line for every specific SKU would be a unique line. So we add those three together, and that's how we get our total lines. So as we measure our LPH, we want the number of picks completed, the number of receipts completed, and returns completed to increase while at the same time lowering the total, you know, hours that we spent to do that. Great question. 
Is there a particular reason you use Gaylords? Is it the size of the, the Gaylords? Uh, hey, oh, one, one sec. Do we, what's the process? Are you asking what the process is? I'm sorry, I didn't hear the full question. Two and a half percent is what our return uh, that we have on returns. So our is about two n. So so did you get that? The two and a half percent is what our returns per percent is. Okay, okay, I got that. Thank you. I'm sorry. Now, what was your question? Yeah, I was uh, interested with uh, in that RDC. There was a picture of all the Gaylords, and they all seem to be a standard size <coughs> for a particular reason, or are they just a uniform size, and can they stack or? Any reason why you don't palletize cases? Yeah, absolutely. The, the Gaylords are all uniform size. They're one size. They are stackable. I don't know if you recall that picture on the receiving dock where they were double stacked. And the double stack fits exactly into the back of a 53-foot okay. trailer. Okay, so you can put them in there. So basically on a 53-foot trailer, you can put 54 Gaylords. Okay, so they fit right in on, on, the, on the truck specifically that you have about two to three inches of, of clearance on a trailer uh, as you put those in. We also, what I didn't have a picture of, we also have cooler um, Gaylords. They're large blue containers about the same size as those that you saw there, and they're refrigerated. They're about three inches thick. They have very large ice bricks, similar to what you and I would use for our, you know, in our cooler that we take to the park on the weekend. Um, freeze them, put those in, and they will actually maintain the, the, the temperature from the Memphis Distribution Center all the way up into Seattle, Boston, some of the farthest out spots. Uh, you know, for up to 48 hours, and the trucks on that usually only take about 24 to 30 hours to, the, to our farthest point. So, so those are stackable as well. They're a tad smaller, but um, there are occasions where we, where the RDC will use pallets, um, but typically we can put more product into the uh, into the Gaylords. Uh, and so basically, it's how much product can I put into a Gaylord to maximize my space yep. in the truck. Some would say, well, if it's already on a pallet, why do I want to unpalletize it only to stack it into a, a Gaylord? You know, and again, that's part of the pick process, though so that takes place out on another part of the warehouse. But on occasion, we will get a pallet of product. So, and, and they do come in from the RDC, but typically it's in Gaylords. Another question. Hmm? Uh, you explained that I missed it, but these fields that are numbered from vendors, uh, they have a destination. Yeah, I mean, it's still a PO process, so I mean, it's more automated because they're both in the testing facilities. But the FDC, based on, um, you know, again, using SCORE and everything, uh, orders will be, I think it's more automated, the trip, and then oh, yeah. it's an automated process that SCORE will go in and know what the Atlanta Distribution Center sold through, and then place that order back to the RDC, and Atlanta's getting six day a week RDC delivery, so they're getting it on Saturday as well. So they're getting a truck from the RDC every day to backfill. But it's another automated PO in our system and picked using Acumax just like any other system. To the RDC, a forward distribution center is another customer. So since it's internal, we can up, always we can up up, up the, the quantity to full cases. Right. So, you know, as opposed to an automatic order system, we would use say many thirteen pieces, it's gonna order 